Hi, welcome to Dan Makes Things. My name's Dan and I made a teeny tiny supercapacitor powered BD-1 droid from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I absolutely love this model and I always wanted to make a small version for my desk that uses LEDs in some way. But the hassle and space requirements of incorporating a battery that either had to be replaced or be recharged put me off and I didn't want to have it permanently attached to a power source. Well recently I bought a couple of 5.5 volt 4 farad supercapacitors and it turns out they can power a couple of LEDs for days. So I thought why not combine the two and make a model with a detachable base that acts as a charger for the supercapacitor. The circuit is actually really simple as you can see here. You connect the positive end of the supercapacitor via a resistor, then the negative back to the negative terminal of the power supply. Then, in parallel, connect the LED to the supercapacitor, and don't forget a resistor there. The LED I'm using has one integrated. The supercapacitor will charge until it matches the voltage of the power supply, and the LED will light up as long as the voltage of the supercapacitor is high enough. This is what that looks like as a schematic. You can calculate how large your resistor needs to be when charging the supercapacitor based on how much current your power source can supply. You can see here that with a 200 ohm resistor, the 4 farad supercapacitor will charge in just short of an hour, but only requires around 25 milliamps. We could speed that up to around 30 seconds with a charger capable of outputting 2.55 amps. I'm happy with a trickle charge, and I have a 200 ohm resistor, so that'll do for now. Next, I needed a way to connect the model to the base and supply power without having to unplug the wires manually. I looked at wireless power transfer, but since I wanted this to be something that's on all the time, I really wanted to make it as efficient as possible. I had a few pogo pins lying around, so I tested that out instead. I printed a couple of test feet. On one side I carved out a small indentation to fit a piece of PCB cut down to size, then soldered the resistor to the PCB. On the opposite foot I made a mount for a pogo pin. Then on the base I added the same configuration, so that the foot with the pogo pin would connect to a recessed PCB, and the foot with the PCB would connect to a pogo pin. This meant that if the model was turned round, it wouldn't be able to make a connection to the supercapacitor in reverse. Pogo pins are spring-loaded, and they're normally used to create temporary electrical connections for testing. In this case they worked really well, but I needed a way to keep the model in place and also help guide the connections to the right point. So I printed magnets in the feet then glued magnets to the base to help the model snap into place. After that test, it was time to start the build. I'm using a model directly from Thingiverse, but I wanted to scale it to fit the supercapacitor and then print everything to that size. So I first modeled the supercapacitor in Thingiverse, then imported the head and resized it to fit. It turned out to be around 15% of the original size of the model. I also needed to modify the feet. The test foot that housed the pogo pin worked well, it just needed to be resized to match the new scale of around 15% of the original model size. So I imported the foot at 15% and then resized it to match. I also wanted to include a space for the magnet so I took the dimensions of the magnet and modelled a hole that was slightly bigger and then embedded it in the foot itself. For the opposite foot, I did the same thing with the magnet. Then I needed to make a small recess for the PCB.
I then added a channel for the resistor to connect to the PCB. I also needed to modify the face so that the LED that I have would fit through the model. I lined them up, created a hole slightly larger than the LED and carved it out. It took a couple of attempts to print the feet, and in the end I just dropped the magnets in while it was printing, so the alignment wouldn't be messed up when I resumed the print, which seemed to happen the first time. Luckily nothing in the printhead attracted the magnets while they were exposed. I messed up the model a little, so that the top of the magnets were visible after printing, but a little bit of fine surface filler solved that problem. Then it was finally time to start assembling things. I actually printed two heads, one with the back panel detachable so that I could insert a green LED behind and have a thin section for it to light up. Unfortunately, there wasn't room to fit that in this version, but with a smaller supercapacitor that might be an option. For now, I've just painted that section green. Now I don't need to tell you that I'm not a model painter, but I'm doing my best. If you'd like to criticise my paint job, the best way to do that is by liking and subscribing to this channel and hitting the bell icon. I decided not to go for the original BD1 colour scheme, mostly because I don't have many paints, so I decided to go for a blue version that I like to call the best I could do. Wiring everything together was actually quite simple. First I took some insulation tape and covered the capacitor so that nothing would cause a short later. Then I stripped off some of the insulation from the wire so that I could connect the supercapacitor to the wire and then have it continue down to the feet. Once that was assembled, I clipped it onto a power supply and then just waited to see if everything worked as expected. For the base, I cut another small PCB and connected that to a wire and fed it through the base into a 3D printed recess. Then I wired that to a USB breakout board. The magnets are then glued in place to make sure we have the position correct, so I secured them while they were connected to the magnets in the model. Next I needed to mark a position for the pogo pin, so I marked that up and then drilled a hole for the pin to fit in the base.
Then a final step was to add some static grass to the base. So I watered down some PVA glue and added that to the top, then sprinkled on the static grass. Then to add some extra character, I added a few tufts of grass where they wouldn't interfere with the feet. So what's next? I'd love to try redesigning the base to have some sort of charging indicator. I also designed this so that I could power one base and link it to others so that more than one model can be powered and charged from the same source. There will definitely be more of these in the future. Let me know in the comments what you'd build next. I've made the modified files available and linked to the original model on Thingiverse in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.